Welcome to All Real Estate All the Time with Whitney Nicely. Whitney is the principal broker for Whitney Buys Houses and the principal auctioneer for Nicely Done Auctions. She owns a real estate portfolio, including land, houses, and apartment buildings across East Tennessee. Whitney will teach you how to purchase real estate for profit and help you achieve lifelong goals. You don't need to be a real estate agent to be a good real estate investor. And now the star of her own show, Whitney Nicely. Hello, good morning. Welcome to All Real Estate All the Time. I am Whitney Nicely, and I have a very special guest in the studio today. My husband, Jason, is here. Say hello, dear. Good morning. You got to get closer to the microphone than that. Nobody's going to be able to hear you. Good morning. That's much better. Uh, We also have his kids, Gavin and Harrison, are sitting out there with Adam right now. So if you hear children screaming in the background, you'll feel just at home, I'm sure. (laughs) At least I do. So Jason is not as interested in houses as I am, but we'll try to go back and forth and show you some of the benefits to houses versus commercial real estate, okay? Jason and I own apartments. Uh, We've got a triplex in Morristown, and we've got some apartments in Strawberry Plains, and we have vacancies too. So if you're looking for somewhere to live, either in Morristown or Straw Plains, you can see all the properties that we have on WhitneyBuysHouses.com. But Jason is a real estate investor. I've convinced him that he is a real estate investor. Before we got together, he knew how to buy a primary residence, and that was it. That's about as much real estate as you cared for, right, babe? That's right. (laughs) But now, what do you know about real estate? Well, to start off with, I was under the false illusion that um, you had to have money to buy real estate. Um, I didn't know that you could go into transactions and actually, uh, you know, make it possible to buy stuff with no money down. Uh, I didn't know anything about uh, assigning contracts, um, didn't know anything about taking over property subject to, uh, you know, all the wonderful things that I've learned, you know, just from shadowing you for uh, the last four or five years. (laughs) Did you hear that, ladies? (laughs) All right. So you say um, no money down, no credit, all that jazz and whatever. But why is that important? I mean, because you've you've told this a hundred times, you thought that everybody could go get a mortgage. That's correct. I didn't know that there was a large segment of the population, uh, you know, whether it be they're self-employed or, you know, you've gone through a divorce and, and your credit's been dragged through the mud. Didn't know there was a segment of the population out there that had, uh, you know, cash money looking to purchase a home and the banks were just basically telling them to get lost. Uh, that was kind of a foreign concept to me. Um, you know, I thought that, uh, you know, you were supposed to be able to go and and put 20% down and, and get a loan from a bank and, you know, finance the thing for 30 years and, uh, go merrily along your way. 30 years. Nah, 15, if you're lucky. Oh my gosh. 30 years sounds like an eternity. People really sign up for mortgages for 30 years. Uh, yeah, I've done it a couple of times. Would you recommend it? Absolutely not. (laughs) not even prompting prompting him on these answers y'all <laughs> all right so um tell me one other thing tell, tell me i love the story that you tell about the first house that i was working on that it really clicked in your head it was a new market you remember that one uh i do tell, tell me that story and when because you weren't a fan of me buying real estate when i first got started yeah, it just, to, you know, to me, it uh, didn't make sense. We were doing, you know, what we call the creative financing, and I just couldn't really get it through my head, you know, what sort of seller would be interested in, um, you know, working with you versus, um, you know, just going ahead and, you know, contracting with an agent, putting a sign in the yard, marketing the property, paying them a commission, and, and getting a check at closing. Um, you know, you, you had told me about the types of buyers that, that you'd be able to help. But on the sellers, I was totally confused. Um, you know, not only till we had this property um, and, and we really realized that, hey, you know, the people were in a situation where they needed to get out from under that mortgage. Um, unfortunately, because of the economic downturn, they had no equity. They had zero equity in the property. Um, you know, so it wasn't possible for them to even sell the house on their own and cover the mortgage, much less uh, you know, do the repairs to make it pretty so that people would find it interesting. And then on top of that, be expected to pay six or 7% in real estate commissions. It just, just wasn't going to happen. Or 10% in commissions. Um, yeah. Or, or 10, uh, you know, and, and what I found interesting was, 
you know, by working with you, they were able to solve their problem. They were able to get the house sold uh, that, that met their needs um, as well as a prospective buyer that wasn't able to get financing from a bank. So, um, you know, top it off with the fact that, you know, you made a little money on the transaction as, as well. Uh, I'll kind of call that a win, win, win. And that was the first time that I actually opened my eyes to see, uh, you know, how it was both beneficial from a real estate investor standpoint, from a buyer standpoint, as well as, uh, you know, extremely beneficial for the seller uh, that just needed to get out of that bad situation and have somebody, you know, cover their monthly obligations that they had to the bank. Are you talking about the new market house on Susan? Or are you talking about the one out on Lowry? Uh, I was talking to the one on Lowry. Man, okay. So that's the one I was talking about too. So do you remember when I took you to that house? What did you think about it? Um, uh, the first one I was wondering who could possibly want to live in this house. Um, you know, it, um, to, to say that, uh, it, it was less than ideal conditions for me would have been an understatement. Uh, as a matter of fact, it, it would have taken me probably uh, a great deal of money for me to spend one night in the house. <laughs> Um, you know, I mean, it was, it was dirty. Uh, there was mildew. It obviously had some problems. Um, the funny thing for me was as soon as you started to market the property, the phone started ringing off the hook. That was my next question. Quit jumping ahead. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So we're looking at this basically ugly house, right? And you and I are not going to move into it, but it doesn't really matter if we're going to move into it or not. I mean, I tell all the sellers that I'm not moving into this house anyway, right? That's right. So I bought this house. I've got this house under contract. And as soon as I put it out on the market, I mean, how many calls did I have that first morning, that first afternoon? Oh, at least half a dozen in the, in the first few hours it was listed. And how many people went to look at it? Uh, almost everyone came to look at it that exact same day. And why is that? That was because of the money. Um, you know, people saw what it was listed for. Um and, you know, at this point, I had not even seen the property myself. You know, it was later on uh, that weekend when we went to see the property. Um, and, and that's when I kind of had a revelation. We It was hot outside. We got back in the car. The air was running, and it felt good. But I paused for a minute. I remember you asked me. You said, what's wrong? And um, I said, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit blown away um, and, and maybe uh, even a little bit spoiled in, in what I'm used to. Because, spoiled's a good word for you. Um <laughs> You know, what I thought was deplorable conditions was actually someone else's dream. I mean, by this point, there were three or four people falling all over themselves to see who could be the first person to race to you, give you down payment money, and put in an application. Option fee money. And, um, you know, it, it for me, it was a very humbling experience because, you know, what I probably would have bought and either... Uh, you know, taking a doze or two or, or a match <laughs> to, um, you know, someone else saw uh, something that, that was that was a their castle. dream in that. Right. Yeah. And um, that that was that was also one of the first times that uh, I really um, realized that, you know, w with real estate, um, it, it really is in the eye of the beholder. Um, and, and really, no matter the property, um, someone out there is interested uh, you know, I think the apartments that you just uh, were working on recently, um, you know, off of um, Mansion Avenue over there were, were a good example of something that, you know, most people would not want to deal with. Uh, and you found a buyer that was really excited. Well, let me let me go back to something you said. It's in the in the eye of the beholder, right? That's correct. But the price has a lot to do with it. Yes, absolutely. So if your price is right you're flooded. If your price is wrong, you're not. And a lot of people listening have their house listed or they're trying to rent it themselves. And Yeah, I've learned this over the last four or five years. I don't care if you've got it listed on Craigslist, if you've got a for sale by owner sign in the yard, or if you have you know one of the hottest real estate agents in town that has your property listed. If you're not getting offers on it, your price is wrong. There's, there's nothing else I can say about that because, you know, can, people can say it's condition, uh, but we've seen many times over how, uh, you know, people are willing to overlook a condition when the price is right. That's right.
And a lot of times my buyers call me and they're like, well, how much is it a month? How much does it take to move in? And they never ask me what the purchase price is. Which to you, you would have said, well, how much is the purchase price? And then you'd get down to the nitty gritty. I mean, that's how you buy cars. Isn't that how you buy real estate? We're led to believe that anyway. (laughs) Okay, so we've been talking about this new market house. And up until this house, I'd probably been in real estate for almost a year. But until then, you really thought I had that church camp mentality, right? Sure. I thought it was one of those things, you know, it's kind of a fad. We'll try it for a while. If it really doesn't last, then we'll go do something else. Okay. So I want to get back to that in just a half a second. We are going to talk about commercial properties because you and I love apartments. There's way more money in apartments and I'll break down the money on that. But I thank you for listening. And this is all real estate all the time with Whitney Nicely. Welcome back to All Real Estate, All the Time with Whitney Nicely, where we teach you the foundation of real estate investing for profits. Now, here's Whitney. I want to remind you that I'm on my best behavior today because my husband's in the studio, so we won't be doing any husband bashing or anything like that today. Uh, My stepkids are out there listening too, so it's bright and early for the East family today. (laughs) All right, Jason, we are talking about houses. And I love houses, but you don't particularly love them as much as I do. Uh, No, that's correct. Um, You're much more of a social butterfly than I am. That's the truth. Um, You'll talk to anybody about anything. That's the Uh, truth. Well, I don't know. I really want to get down within 30 seconds of their real estate problem. Otherwise, I get bored. (laughs) That's fair. Uh, I'm a little bit more analytical. Uh, To me, it's more about the numbers. Um, You know, when you deal with people in their primary uh, residence, um, everybody has a story. You know, it's worth more because my grandfather built it with his bare hands or, you know, on the buyer side. Well, I love everything about the house, but I don't really like uh, the hardware in the kitchen or I don't really like the faucets or, you know, it doesn't have the correct granite. Change it. Um, When you come to commercial property or, or even multifamily, you know, it's usually about people finding a need. Uh, you know, you, you never hear somebody that needs a commercial space say, oh, my gosh, that's a deplorable color on the wall. Um, you know, if they don't <laughs> like it, they'll just paint it. Um, you know, they're more concerned about does the roof leak uh, and exactly how many usable square feet does it have. It's more about meeting a need uh, than it is about personal preference. And, you know, for me, I, I just don't like all the chitter chatter that goes along with, um, you know, the residential real estate. Uh, The other thing is, uh, in certain ways, uh, multifamily is somewhat safer. Um, If you go out and you invest $100,000 into a single uh, family home and you rent that home for for eight months and and your tenants move out in the middle of the night, you have no income coming in. Uh, If you took that same $100,000 and invested it in, let's say, a triplex where you now have three tenants, uh, maybe even bringing in the same income per month um if one tenant moves out you still have two-thirds of that income coming in um you know while you look to recoup um and and find a new tenant for the vacant unit so um in terms of just you know hardcore facts those are some uh, the metrics are also very different as well Um, i'm cutting you off slow down you're not letting me get a word in here that was the point right (laughs) no this is my show (laughs) i want to talk too darn it Okay, so going back, I think you skipped. You were talking about commercial for a second, and then you skipped to multifamily, and then you were getting on some other tangents. So let's go back to just commercial for a second, because I want to say that you were talking about, you know, people are more worried about the usable square footage and the paint color. They'll just change it. No big deal. I want to interject here that I also manage some industrial property and industrial people, commercial guys. I mean, and when I say commercial right now, I'm talking about um not multifamily okay i'm talking about like the uh how how would you say that not residential commercial but the other side okay just the other stuff mcdonald's strip centers other stuff business purpose business purposes that'll be good okay those guys are worried about traffic count 
they're worried about accessibility. So if I've got a lot that's, um, you know, three acres and I talk to somebody that needs a place for outside storage, but they can't pull a tractor trailer in there, then the lot's useless. Even if I do have a bunch of road frontage, if I, even if I do have a bunch of cool stuff, it's got to depend on the usability, like you said, and the traffic count. And that's what I love about commercial. You can have... A really pretty house and like you were saying if you don't like the paint I say just change it but in houses a lot of times people will say okay never mind people don't say this women will say they either do or do not like the house because it is too close to their mom or too far away from their mom or they don't like the kitchen and you don't have that problem in commercial people just don't say that in commercial if they don't like the kitchen they just tell you they don't like the kitchen. They don't care. They don't get as emotionally attached in commercial. And that's what I really like about apartments or business commercial, as you said. Uh, the next, then you switched over to multifamily, right? Yes. And you were talking about this property. And just to break down the numbers a little bit more, you said that you could go buy a house for $100,000. You could put one tenant in say they're paying $800 a month and you could take the same $100,000 because people ask me this all the time. Oh, I want to get started. I want to be a real estate person. I want to be a landlord. What should I buy first? I'm looking at this house and I immediately say, go buy a triplex for exactly what you just said. If you have a triplex, even if they only pay $500 a month, you still have three people chipping in. So you, the first person on a hundred thousand dollar house, say you put twenty percent down on the house or the triplex, your payment's probably what five or six hundred. Sure. Okay. So if it's five or six hundred, and you have one tenant that pays eight hundred dollars, just like you said, if they move out in the middle of the night, who pays the next month rent? You do. If you have a triplex and your mortgage is six hundred dollars, and you have three people chipping in at five hundred dollars a piece, and somebody moves out exactly like you said the remaining tenants pay so two people are going to give you a thousand dollars and part of that will go to the mortgage part of it will go towards taxes and insurance and then you need that third person for murphy and what's murphy what's always going to happen <laughs> murphy's law is what can go wrong will go wrong so if you got one tenant eight hundred dollars or you got three tenants you think you have three headaches but you really don't i mean we love our triplex don't we yes we do and why do we love that so much? Because I manage it. <laughs> because I can keep my thumb on it a little bit better. But we've got 16 apartment units, and I just don't want to deal with 16 people. So that's why we have the property manager on that one. Yes, that's correct. What do you think? If somebody does have a triplex, what, what's that magical number when you do need to pass it over to the property manager? Um, I would say it's about their appetite for headaches. Um, you know, for every tenant that you have or every unit that you have, um, you know, you're going to have things that are going to break. It's almost like a rental property at the beach. But um, Whitney, what if they punch a hole in my sheetrock? People are going to tear your stuff up. But what am I going to do? It'll, it'll just hurt my feelings. Uh, if that's the kind of thing that you're into, you should probably turn it over to a property management company. Immediately. And, you know, that's a good point that you bring up. Um, real estate investment is kind of like to me owning a Jeep. It's not for everybody. <laughs> um, you know, how many people do you know that have bought a motorcycle or a Jeep or whatever, and it, they just found out it wasn't for them? Um, you know, a, a lot of people look at it and, and want to do work themselves and there's nothing no. wrong with doing that, but it consumes your time. And it's the same thing with property management. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, well, that's extra stuff in my pocket. Uh, for me, it's weekend calls that I don't have to deal uh, with people complaining about toilets or um, gutters or the next door neighbor, the next door neighbor or, <laughs> you know, God forbid, bed bugs, ooh, um, ooh. you know, just turn it over to a property manager and you'll probably sleep a lot better at night. Ew, ew, bugs. We had some roaches in the triplex. How do you get rid of bugs? Fumigate. Write a check. Write a check. <laughs> I write a check. Get rid of the bugs. Okay, so let's say, I don't know how I want to phrase this. Let's say somebody has $50,000. They got an inheritance or they got a uh, settlement or they've saved $50,000. And they want to become an investor. What would you tell them to do? 
Well, I think you have to look at what's your goal to begin with. Uh, you know, the first thing is, what do you want out of it? Is your goal to build, um, you know, generational type wealth where, you know, it may be a thing where you want to put a lot more money into building lots of equity that you can pass on. Is it you need passive income and, and cash flow now to support yourself um, every month? Um, you know, I think you really need to sit down and, and outline your goals. Uh, you know, if your uh, goal is to have $5,000 of passive income each month, and yet you're looking at properties that are only yielding cash flow of $500 a month, you're kind of wasting your time. Um, you, you need to look at bigger properties, uh, you know, that would start yielding the types of returns that you're talking about. So would you take that first 50 and maybe flip a house or what would you do with it? If my goal was to make 5,000 cash flow and replace my nine to five. Um, I, I would say that I wouldn't probably turn around and flip it on my first one. Um, you know, myself, I, I would probably look for something where I could put some of that money down, um, you know, into a more long term, uh, and then develop a strategy about how I could take the remaining amount and maybe turn that into quicker cash doing some fix and flips or, uh, you know, something like that. So I would probably do what we call diversify. Uh, you know, not put my eggs in one basket, go for something that meets the short term and the long term goals. Warren Buffett said, don't diversify, find something and use it until it just dies on you. I mean, just pump it until it won't give you any more. And he is a billionaire. <laughs> He's got nothing to say. <laughs> yeah, I got nothing. Okay. Um, and what is, you talk about goals. I had a guy come spend the whole day with me on Monday. And the first thing I did when I picked him up from the airport was we sat down and went over his goals. And I'll tell you all that his goals are not so different than anybody that I ever speak to. Okay. When I speak to you on the phone and you tell me you want to be a real estate investor, that one of the first things I do is talk about your goals. So that's what we're going to talk about here in a second. Okay. We'll be back and we're going to talk about our goals and some of your goals and how people can make their money work for them instead of working for their money. This is Whitney Nicely on All Real Estate All the Time. Welcome back to All Real Estate, All the Time with Whitney Nicely, where we teach you the ins and outs of buying real estate in Knoxville. Now, here's Whitney. Y'all are in for a treat this morning because my husband, Jason, is with me in the studio. Yay! Or this afternoon, whenever you're listening on the replay. But Jason, say hello. Hello. And we just finished the last segment. We were talking about some goals. And I don't really know that we need to talk about our goals individually or as a married couple but as much as we need to talk about the goals that we hear people saying okay so i had a guy he flew up from florida on monday this past monday and he spent the whole day with me and he did that because he wanted to go look at properties he wanted to talk to sellers he wanted to be in the nitty-gritty with a real real estate investor so that he can see more of how to shape his goals okay so the first thing that we did when i picked him up from the airport at 7 a.m and the first thing that we did well we went and looked at some properties but when we got settled we did his goals and his first goal was that he wanted to have a rental income great i mean how many people want a real real estate income it's kind of like saying i want a job right yeah it is like you have to be specific something about real estate get you excited okay and if you want a rental income awesome great perfect love it but like you were talking about when you talk about your goals if you want a rental income why what part of your life needs a rental income are you wanting to replace your nine to five are you just wanting to save up money for a retirement are you you know just wanting to have some fun and have some free money coming in not free money you have to work for it a little bit but you know maybe you want vacation money that's fine you can do that through a rental income but i need to know especially if you're wanting to replace your nine to five let's say you make five thousand dollars a month are you comfortable right now in your life with five thousand dollars a month no or you wouldn't be looking at real estate okay you want more money and that's why you're thinking about getting into real estate so would ten thousand dollars a month make you happy would fifteen thousand dollars a month make you happy, or is it going to be a hundred thousand dollars a month? Because if that's the conversation that we're having, we need to have a really deep conversation. But if you're happy just to replace this five thousand dollars from your salary or your nine to five or your truck route or whatever it is with another five thousand from rental income, that's fine. But I would venture to say that that's not going to satisfy you long term. If you're living on five thousand dollars a month right now, 
Are you saving for retirement? Are you going on those fancy vacations? Or do you need $10,000 a month? What's another goal that people tell us? It's all about the money, really, isn't it? Yeah, it, it usually <laughs> is. I mean, it's kind of cool to brag and say, you know, I got 15 houses. I got some land. I got some apartments. I, I do real estate. I flip houses, blah, 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 blah. But the people that really come to me are having some sort of financial. They want to know how to invest their money to make 50000 into 100000 into 500000 into a million with as little effort as possible. And the TV shows make it look like that, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looks like anybody can do it. You know, they never show the, um, um, you know, they always show the success stories. They don't show the ones that, um, you know, that turned out bad. You, you know, I would say the two mistakes that people make in real estate investing is, number one, going off on the journey without any knowledge or education uh, is a big one. Um, you know, the second one is what am I working towards? Um, you know, if, if I don't have any goals and I can't see that light at the end of the tunnel that I'm trying to achieve, um, you know, I, I think a lot of people lose sight of that. They forget what they're trying to do and, and, and they quit. I mean, if you're scheduling a road trip and you're trying to get to the beach, how do you know when to stop driving when you get to the beach? It's just like that in real estate investing. If you want to have 15 houses, you have to know that or you'll end up buying two or three and then be like, okay, I'm cool. Unless your goal is 15. But if your goal is money, then you may need 50 houses and 50,000 apartment units. Yeah. The other one that we hear a lot, you know, is people come and saying, oh, you know, I want real estate to be my primary source of income and replace, you know, my current nine to five or, um, you know, what other headache that they have today. Um, and a lot of people do that because they had a bad day at their nine to five. <laughs> you can have a bad day in real estate too. Like, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer here, but I've come in and cried in the kitchen floor before, haven't I? <laughs> no, it's it's true. And, um, you know, I don't know if, uh, you know, Victor Jernigan, who's the president of our Knox Rhea, is, is listening or not. But, hey, you know, Victor. if he is, I'm going to steal one of his quotes here. And I, I love it. It's one of my favorite. You know, you can build generational wealth through real estate if you do it the right way. Uh, but you can also sustain generational poverty if you do it the wrong way, um, you know, and, and, and that, you know, like you alluded to earlier, that the TV shows make it look so easy. Um, but, you know, one of the things that we always focus on, especially in your coaching program is where do I want to invest? You know, and a lot of people come out and say, oh, well, I don't care. Just get me where the deal is. Well, find a honey hole. Yeah, you, you need to know your market, uh, and I don't care if that's in your hometown or your home neighborhood, you know, or if it's 5,000 miles across the country, you have to know that market. Your neighborhood. Um, and, and you have to know it well. I vote you invest in your neighborhood because you already like it. <laughs> Unless you've found a honey hole in some other part of town and you want to bring that neighborhood up. But I like to bring up my own neighborhood. I mean, I've got five houses in my neighborhood because i like my neighborhood i want the property values to come up i don't want some other you know fly by night investor coming in and maybe doing a good job and maybe not i want to be in charge of it because i'm a control freak <laughs> all right so tell me you got some notes here what are you looking at what are we talking about ratios well we were looking at ratios and we were talking a little bit about the differences but earlier between residential and you know multi -hou uh, family housing um, you know, one of the other differences that you talk about is in real estate, uh, in residential, it's all about comparables, right? What do the comps tell you? If you have a realtor come out, look at listing your property, uh, you know, they're going to bring you a comp sheet. Well, you know, what did this house sell and what did I'll it bring have? you a comp sheet. If you ask me to come buy your house, I'll still bring you a comp sheet to try to buy your house. Um, you know, what, what do you, you know, what do you think it'll sell for? And it, it's all about comparisons, right? And the bank's going to want to do the appraisal and, and they're going to have comps in there. Uh, you know, when you look at multifamily, um, it, it's a little bit different. Uh, you know, everything's about cap rate, uh, and it's not really about a comparable and everybody says, Oh, well, you know, what is the cap rate? And, you know, I can go in there and tell you, well, it's the, you know, NOI divided by the purchase price, but to the general person, that's not going to mean much. In layman's terms, what it means is if I paid all cash for the property, what is the rate of return that I would see on my money? And um, what is the average or is there an average? Um, uh, there's an average for each market. You know, if you're, if you're in a hotbed, um, you know, like I would say right now in Tennessee, Chattanooga, uh, Nashville is in Nashville or both big hotbeds. Uh, you know, the funny thing about cat rate is remember we talked about it's the, what you would get return on your money. So, uh, the lower the amount, the hotter the market and, and the less that investors are going to want 
return on their money. It's like golf. Um, you know, so in a, in a market like Chattanooga, uh, you know, just throwing numbers out there, you might see a cap rate in the six and a half uh, percent range, whereas Knoxville, uh, you know, maybe more like eight, eight and a half, nine percent. What's our cap rate um, in Morristown? Uh, you're talking about on the property we acquired most recently? Yes. Uh, that'd be about 13.5 percent. Killing it. <laughs> um, you know, which uh, which indicates, you know, uh, if we paid cash for it, um, that, that's our rate of return. The other thing people want to know is um, the bank is going to want to talk about your debt service coverage ratio. You know, and that, that's basically your what? Uh, debt service coverage ratio. And that's if I loan you money, how do I feel confident about the fact that you're going to be able to repay uh, this loan. So they're going to want to look at rent rolls, you know, what, what's currently being brought in, what's your current rate of expenses, and then they're going to calculate the debt service coverage ratio. But that that's more so for the bank. Uh, they're going to want to see that. Uh, we're not going to get a whole lot into that. But if it's, you know, as a general rule of thumb, the bank's going to want to see about 1.25 or greater. Uh, the other one as an investor that you're really going to want to pay attention to is what is your cash on cash return? So that means if I have to bring money to the closing table and I'm taking money out of my pocket for a down payment, I'm going to finance the rest. What am I going to earn on my money? Um, so, you know, let, let's take that same $100,000 property. If the bank says, hey, we'll do an 80-20 loan. That a means what? An, an 80-20 loan, meaning I'm going to give you 80% of the appraised value for the loan, uh, that means I'm going to have to bring $20,000 of my money to the closing table, right? So I'm going to want to look at what rate of return am I going to get on that $20,000 that I put in. Uh, and, and that's very important. You know, a lot of people have a hurdle rate. Uh, you know, for you and I personally, uh, I like to be in that 35% range. I want to know that- Wait, you're, you're saying we get 35% on our money? On what we actually contributed at the closing table, that's correct. Did y'all hear that? How many of you are getting 35% return on your money? So going back to my question earlier, if I had 50 grand and you're telling me I can put 20,000 down on one house or triplex or something, I could make 35% return on that? All day, every day. Okay, I just want you to know that y'all been listening to me for a while and I don't do numbers like he did. He was absolutely right when he talks about you're analytical and boring and talk about, I mean, not boring, honey, you're not boring, not at all. But um, if anybody else's eyes glazed over when he started talking about that, you're not alone, okay? We do this all the time and I can completely real estate nerd out with you and Jason would love to real estate nerd with you. But if you are confused about what we said, it's totally cool, okay? So we started knowing none of this and you can too, all right? And I teach people how to get started in real estate. And maybe this is too much for you up front. Maybe you just wanna start with a $1,500 investment. Totally cool, totally fine. Check out my website, allaboutrei.com. I've got an application you can fill out to work with me. And don't forget you're listening to All Real Estate All The Time with Whitney Nosley. Welcome back to All Real Estate, all the time, with the only general contractor in town who wears a dress every day, Whitney Nicely. I'm also probably the only person on the radio today that brought children to the studio with her, and my stepsons are here, Gavin and Harrison, and they want to say hello. Y'all get up here, say hello. Hey! <laughs> so I ask them all the time, and they listen to me talk about real estate just all the time. I mean, I'm all real estate all the time, and... Um, actually, when the guy came to spend Monday with me, they were really excited because that meant they didn't have to talk about real estate <laughs> all day, okay? I had somebody else to talk about real estate with. So um, Harrison was on Periscope with me, and he told what he was going to do with his money. But Gavin's here, and I think he's going to tell you all what he's going to do with his money. So step on up there with Daddy and tell us what you're going to do with your money that you're saving. I'm going to buy a life-proof case for my phone. <laughs> no, I thought you were going to buy real estate. You Okay, Harrison, what are you going to do with your money? I'm saving up to buy land and flip it and sell it for more than I bought it. With Very the good answer. Very good answer. Okay, okay. That's better than a life-proof case. Okay, but that's a good lesson, y'all. 
you can either spend your money let's say you save up a thousand dollars okay y'all are trying to save a thousand dollars right and you can get that from school money you can get that from however but you know your kids have money y'all have money adults have money and it doesn't take a lot to get started in real estate okay what harrison said was he was going to buy some land and flip it to make more money he's nine y'all and he's got it figured out okay but his brother is 11 and he's more interested in the gadgets what's the game we play babe cash flow that's correct is it gadgets gadgets yeah what are, what does robert kiyosaki call them Oh, something but anyway you can either spend your money on real estate that's going to come back to you maybe not immediately maybe not in monthly chunks maybe in one large sum or you can spend it on stuff and most of us spend a lot of money on stuff right that's right i like spending money on experiences in real estate i would much rather go on a trip than get well i don't know if i can say that I, w I started to say I'd rather go on a trip for my birthday than get a new purse, but sometimes <laughs> I do like the stuff. Yeah, this is a true story. I asked her uh, about two years ago what she wanted for her birthday, and she told me an apartment complex. <laughs> I mean, who asked for an apartment complex for their birthday? I do, because I'm the little real estate girl. <laughs> and he thought I was kidding, didn't you? No, I just went and bought you an apartment <laughs> complex. We bought that apartment complex, Sorry, honey. We bought an apartment <laughs> complex. So we buy apartment complexes. My brother and I buy houses, and I buy land. He's got huge tracks of land. <laughs> you know what that's from? Monty Python. Adam plays it for me all the time. I haven't seen it. Have you seen Monty Python? It's been a long time. Well, we need to watch it because apparently I have huge tracks of land. <laughs> so that's what i want all of y'all to do i want you to buy land i want you to buy houses i want you to buy apartments because anybody can do it you have to be how old 18 18 to buy land well to enter into a legal contract well we just said the kids were trying to buy land yeah you'd have to sign as a guardian but that's okay <laughs> so you can actually teach your kids how to buy real estate as you are buying real estate and y'all think about this lesson okay let's say you've graduated high school let's even say you went to college you paid a lot for college you graduated you got a great job blah 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 you started a family you had kids and now you've turned around and you said holy smokes i forgot to buy real estate along the way well what better lesson than you know to almost kind of sit the family down and make it a family project hey guys we're gonna not eat out three times this month so that i can save up money to hire a coach because I need to get into real estate investing. Or we're not going to go, we're not going to buy sodas at Dollywood. We're going to, you know, just get water at the fountain. And we're going to save enough money over the summer to buy some real estate. And that way we can all learn as a family how to buy real estate. Think about if your parents had taken you kind of by the hand when you were 8, 9, 11 years old and said, okay, guys, we're going to start buying real estate. Family project we're going to buy real estate when we go on vacation we're going to look at properties we're going to put deals in we have a friend fred and victoria they have twin 12 year old girls and their girls are buying a house right now too aren't they yes because their mom victoria buys houses she flips houses and she takes her kids on her buying adventures they bought three lots or three acres do you remember what he said uh, i don't recall it was definitely three lots and one of the lots had a mobile home on it and they paid Victoria bought this lot, three lots with a mobile home on it for $2,500. And the girls, you know, they've got $1,000 each. They've almost got enough money that they can start buying real estate just like their mom does. So imagine if you're a 12-year-old girl and you and your twin sister are starting to buy real estate, how much are you going to have by the time you can go to college? Maybe you can pay for college if you can get your kids started in real estate early enough. Um, I don't think most people know that. So that that's a good point. Um, I don't think most people know that you can buy houses uh, or, or uh, property without putting money down. I don't think most people know that you can buy a property for $1,500 at, in, in your case of industrial property, yields $250 a month. I don't think a lot of people know that there's even an opportunity to buy a lot with mobile homes on it for $2,500. So, Do you find these deals on the MLS? 
No, uh, chances what? are by the time you see it on the MLS, so have thousands of other people. And if it was a really hot smoking deal, uh, someone would have gotten it under contract already. If it's a really good deal, it went under contract before it even hit the MLS. That's right. That happens, y'all. So when the description comes out and it says, this is a hot deal, <laughs> I kind of chuckle when I see those descriptions because clearly you're using a different formula than I am. Formulas are also really important. And I'll just tell you all that I teach people, okay? I had a guy come up this week from Florida. I've got two women in Colorado. I've got one woman in California. I've got a guy up in Pennsylvania. I teach people all across the country how to buy real estate. And you know what's awesome? Y'all have me right here in Knoxville. You can come spend the day with me if you want to. You can listen to the radio. You can get all these great tips and tidbits. And you can have me out to your events. If you want me to teach your whole organization some of the tricks and tidbits that I've picked up over the last seven years, I'm totally ready for it. Let's do this. Uh, can I tell them the first time I thought you were crazy story? The first time or like the 15th time? Yeah, one of the thousands of times, but... <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, you know, early on in our relationship, um, you know, Whitney came to me and she told me, she said, Hey, thinking about going to this course down in Florida and they teach you about real estate. And she told me how much it was. And I said, hold on, hold on that many hundreds of dollars or that many thousands of dollars. And she goes, no, that many thousands, thousands. of dollars. And, uh, I reserved my opinion at the, at the time, uh, no, she you went, didn't. she went and, and, and spent the money and she came back and, um, you know, but in my mind, I told her the whole time, I said, I didn't think it would last. I thought you had wasted your money. I said, you know, you, you hear these all the time on the radio, you know, Hey, you know, I'm the guy that had my electricity cut off nine times. And now I'm telling people how to do this, you know, blah, 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 blah. I said, you know, they're going to take your money. They're going to give you these things and nothing's ever going to come of it. And at the end of the day, you, you've just now wasted your money. Um, I didn't. And I don't like to say that I was wrong because if I do, she'll remind me you of it were. over and over and over. I was uh, right. But in this say case, uh, you were right. Um, <laughs> Proof. You know, <laughs> I I watched you as you started, and I remember the first day uh, you call me and you had a contract on a house and how excited you are. I also remember the next day when you call me squalling. I couldn't understand <laughs> what you were saying because the people had backed out. Um, you know, and it was at that point that without the coaching and the person to go to, um, you know, I'm not sure that you would have continued that endeavor. Um, I definitely wouldn't have bought 14 houses in my first year if I didn't have a coach in the first six months to kick me in the tail and prod me along. There's a lot of misinformation out there. Uh, you know, if you comb the Internet, you're going to find conflicting stories. No, no, no. Tell them about the postcard I got. Tell them about the postcard I got. Uh, you're talking about the one where the guy wants to help Whitney nicely become a millionaire? Yes, a real estate millionaire. And all I need to do is pay for his course and send him my leads and suddenly I'll be a millionaire, right? Uh, that's what it said. <laughs> he said it was super easy and so fun and all I need to do is pay for his course and then split all my deals and give him all these leads. He's not actually going to teach me how to be an investor, is he? Uh, no, he's going to pad his own pocket with the leads that you bring to him. Is that what I do in my coaching? No. I actually teach people, okay? I don't want to split these deals with you. I mean, I will if you want to twist my arm into it, but I want to teach people how to do this themselves no matter where they are. And if you're in Knoxville, that's cool. Bring it on, okay? I've got my own little honey hole. Most of you have your own little honey hole that you like in Knoxville, and we probably won't ever cross. So learn how to be a real real estate investor. And I would say learn from somebody that's actually doing deals. This dude I got a postcard from probably hasn't sat in somebody's kitchen and made a deal ever, if not within the last, you know, several months. And I, <laughs> I find myself sitting in somebody's kitchen writing up a contract about every week. And if I don't, I'm bored. <laughs> what happens when I'm bored? <laughs> she spends money. <laughs> So if y'all want me to spend some money on your house, please call me. Whitney Buys Houses, 865-309-4500. I've got lots of tips and tidbits. You can follow me on Instagram or Facebook, Whitney Buys Houses. If you're interested, I have people that email me all the time that they want to, you know, either quit their nine to five or save up for retirement or just get that extra twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year to pay for a fancy vacation. Then, you know, I coach people. I'm a real estate coach. I'm a real estate broker. I'm a real estate auctioneer. I mean, 
I just love real estate. So check out the website. Take my free quiz, which is reipopquiz.com to find out what kind of investor you'll be. I'm an aggressive investor, by the way. <laughs> and please check us out allaboutrei.com. This is Whitney Nicely with All About All Real Estate All the Time. <laughs>